Radiant Team Ban. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome Dyer back here to the Tech Labs Cup 2014 Land Finals. It's the Grand Radiant Finals, team finally, ban. between Next KZ and Team Empire. It's a best of three series. Thanks so much for joining us here to round it all out on Beyond the Summit. My name is Mott. Joining me this afternoon, this evening, whatever you want to call it, is none other than Pimp Milkle. How are you doing, sir? Hi, I'm doing wonderful, and uh, well, so far it's going to be a great finals. We see Team Empire, one of the powerhouses in the CIS scene, and let's Five face it, like they're one of the hot teams who most likely are going to be giving a direct invite to TI if they perform just like they do Zero usually, time. and those guys, man, they pack a punch, but next, they just played some amazing Dota against Rock's Kiss, and if they can pull it up against Rock's Kiss, they can certainly do it as well against Empire. Yeah, and the thing is, though, Next KZ, I think, already versed up against Team Empire. The series was the winner's bracket finals, I believe, Next KZ versus Empire. Next went down 2-0, so Team Empire, they've been pretty much dominating this entire tournament. They have not dropped a game here at the land finals. I wouldn't expect them to try any less hard here, as they are going to grab up some heroes in just a moment. We do see a couple of bands. But yeah, yeah, you're absolutely right. Team Empire, they should definitely get, I think, an invite to the TI for just group stages, playoffs as well, what have you, because they've been playing on fire. Next KZ, they're playing well in their own right, but I almost feel like Empire is on another level here. Next KZ are going to have to play out of their minds in order to, I think, take the series from Team Empire. Dire team ban. Yeah, also, like, Empire's got so many great heroes they actually can play. We see a bit from Bands go with the Silence, though. We see Silent on his, uh, well... Let's call it a signature Spectre, actually. And they can just make so much stuff happen. They can play all the 6.8 heroes, the Lycans, the Dazzles, the AA, all what have you. And, and they just still perform insanely well with every other hero in the book. So since it's a very open, open, um, let's call it an open meta game right now, you can play lots and lots of heroes. We saw just a Brewmaster. I mean, he wasn't picked for long as time. And yeah, there you go. It's a 6.8 draft. We've got a Lycan first pick. Yeah, you talk about that kind of, I think, just the fact that you can play around these heroes for Team Empire, the fact that they have that ability. They're just so strong in terms of their team play. It seems like they're one of the few Dota teams that just gets the game 100%. They know when to push, when to fight, what heroes to pick, and what scenarios. And they get the Lycan early on. Silent played this earlier, absolutely dominating with it in one game. We'll see if he can do it again. Batrider and Sartar Warrunner coming out for next KZ. Two very strong heroes. One of them usually sits in the off lane. The other one, not sure where it's going to go. And then the Invoker to round it all out for this first pick phase. Hmm. Yeah, that's rather interesting. I mean, Invoker, Lycan... These are like two very solid, very strong picks. Invoker, great control. If it's going to be a Wax Invoker, Center Warren is going to have his uh, work cut out for him. So one bad, well, not even bad, like one well-timed uh, EMP tornado combination and the Center Warren won't have any mana to speak of. And also the bad shot has to be very careful as well. And I like those pickups so far. It's very standard. Um, but well, it's a grand finals, right? So both teams, I want to just be sticking to the roots and... So far, that's a very open draft, and I wonder if we're going to see in this series uh, Van score silence. I would really like to see this, especially against the Centaur, against the Batrider. Someone gets a suit, well, remaining. you just press R, and no one dies, especially not the Lycan, because he's so freaking tanky. Yeah, I think that'd be a bit of a surprise pick, and I don't think anyone will complain about seeing it. I mean, it's a lot of fun to watch. I'm not sure how it fits in the lineup, especially because they need yeah. lockdown. I, I think in this series, maybe, but in this game, it'll be tough to fit in. Nonetheless... I mean, already still pretty strong draft for both sides. Um, the Invoker and Lycan, you've talked about EMP and how that's going to affect the Centaur Warrunner. And I'm, I'd almost expect to see Resolution go for Quaswex, but he's done Quas Exhort before. Yeah, Invoker is generally pretty flexible in terms of what they can build and what items and skills they go for. Bat Rider, the Centaur Warrunner, this is going to be the tricky thing. You could send Bat Mid, you could send Centaur Warrunner off lane, you can actually even use the Centaur as maybe like a safe lane farmer. Yeah, there's a couple of ways you can lane this. Next KZ's draft is a lot more open because of it, whereas Team Empire, you kind of know what they're going to do right now. They're going to send a Lycan to the safe lane farm, maybe aggro if it's going to be an aggro tri lane, but that would be difficult. And then Invoker is going to go mid, more likely than not. Obviously, these things can change, but, you know, we'll see how it goes. Team Empire, they have these two very strong heroes. Next KZ, they go for the Dazzle this time around. We've seen equal play, we've seen Reeves play it. Very strong plays coming up from both of those players. Rubik is going to be picked up for Team Empire. The Spell Steel is going to be going. And all of a sudden, I don't know, this draft's going, I mean, pretty equal in terms of who's getting picked up and what's left in the pool. Yeah, the thing about the Rubik is he's not the strongest laner to speak of. He's he's good, but he's nothing like a Crystal Maiden with like insane CC abilities early on. But, well, going up against a Dazzle and a Centaur and a Batrider, you can just steal lots and lots of spells. If you just get up a Blink Dagger and maybe four stuff later on in the game and steal the Lasso, that's going to be huge. And stealing a Rampage from, from the Centaur Warner is not that hard to do. And remaining. there's just so many great spells. The Double Edge is not the thing you want to steal, but everything else, yeah, this could work. And also, just... 
it's not the greatest belt to steal, but if you have a Firefly, it's hilarious. And uh, I don't know, like, just seeing a Rubik just do all those different things on uh, yeah. with different spells, it's just hilarious. Yeah, his animation is pretty great. And the fact that they kind of gave him that depth is pretty cool. You mentioned spell steal, and I think another one, obviously, Shallow Grave. Not sure if you mentioned that, but that should be a good one to steal if he can get it done. Taking that from the Dazzle, making sure he can cast it on a teammate, that's huge. And I think that's one thing we don't see a lot of Rubik's doing to Dazzles recently. You can get Weave, you can get the Shadow Wave, you can get the Poison Touch, but Rubik mm, generally doesn't get the Shallow Grave as much as you'd like to see. So we'll see how it goes. The last couple of bands came through. There's one minute left on reserve time for next KZ. Um, they can go for another support, they can go for maybe a mid or a safe lane farmer, they have that option. I don't know what they're going to pick up next, but they definitely have room for that support. Yeah, definitely. Also, one, just one quick thing to note, I caught the Stampede Rampage, I always just like jiggle those things around, I'm not sure why, but yeah, if you think about it, it's a rampage, you just run at those, yeah. uh, at those guys, just everyone coming at you, man, you're scared. So anyways, uh, I'm going to be trying to call it a Stampede. But first things first, it's a fourth pick now coming right from NyxKZ, and I'm not sure if they're going to reveal the hand with a second support yet, or if it's going to be more like a, going to pick up our very, let's say, late game oriented carry right now, because they've got a great supporting cask. Dazzle, Shallow Grave, just as you said, healing's coming out, a lot of plus armor, mm -hmm. Centaur Runner's going to be helping out so much, so they can pretty much just fit in everything they want. Yeah, they can go for something a little bit more late game oriented, they could try to fight early on, but against a Lycan it might be difficult. And still, Lycan is not the end-all be-all. He's not going to win a game directly for you. He's got to put in the work. They're going to go for that support, so they will kind of show their hand a bit in terms of the supporting cast like you talked about. Fiend's Grip, another spell that would be great to steal. Brain Sap and Nightmare, both equally good as well. Next KZ, it's interesting they picked that right into a Rubik, but I guess they don't really have a choice there. They could go from the Marana next. It's not banned out. Bane, Marana, very strong combo. Leshret coming up from Dyer Team Empire. Team we saw this back. before. They want to fight a little bit early on. They'll try to get Edict up. Might not be first. They might go Split Earth and then Lightning Storm, but this signifies that Team Empire, they want to be aggressive. They want to try to finish this game or at least get close to it at 30 minutes. Yeah, also the Lightning Storm, the new one, is just so Ten strong in general. I, I really enjoy seeing those uh, Lush Rex being picking up the Lightning Storm very early on. Radiant it's just got four Team seconds Bang. cooldown. Like, this is nothing. Of course you need lots and lots of mana, but right. if you just TP to a team fight and have your full mana uh, and like your full mana pool available for you, you're gonna wreck face with it. And, well, against a Bane and a Dazzle, <laughs> you need to do lots and lots of steeps. Yeah, absolutely. It's going to be tough to bring those guys down for sure. Leshrac, yeah, I mean, you bring up a good point. They did change it. And honestly, Leshrac was one of my favorite heroes beforehand. Now that he has that change going to him, he's he's just as strong. Obviously, Split Earth, really good. It's just a nice little skill shot to land. It's uh, it's not too difficult, but still a lot of fun to get it. Edict pushing through towers. So Empire, with that damage coming through from Leshrac, they might have enough to be able to kind of push early on here. There's no Rost, obviously, so Serpent Warrants are out of the question. Not that they would pick it up anyways. It's a support at this point. You have the Invoker. You have the Lycan. For Empire, they need an offlane hero. But first, they've got to ban something, and they only have 16 seconds left in reserve time. And they know that next KZ, they're looking for another core here. They're not quite sure what to ban, though. Ten seconds remaining. Yeah, I'm not too sure either. Like, they... They could run so Five much. I just think the whole draft is just so very open. They can play whatever the hell they want. And wow, there's a slack banner. That's that's rather interesting, I have to say. And they don't have too much bonus time, so they kind of have to kind of have to know what they're gonna be picking up. But hmm, I mean, Luna is still in the pool. She mm. could be very active around the map. Yeah. And she can just dish out lots and lots of damage in the mid game. But against the Lycan, who's most likely gonna rush BKB, oh, I'm not sure. Yeah, I mean, Luna could be a good option. Carry into that late game later when you have the right click damage coming through to your aid. It's actually surprising that she didn't get banned, considering how good Silent as well as Next KZ are with her. But Silent obviously has that liking to go with already. So for Next KZ, it's it's got to be I think a farming carry at this point. Bat Rider, they got to pick something. They're gonna go wow. for the Gyrocopter. So Nightmare into Rocket Barrage. There's a lot of AOE damage coming out here for Next KZ. It's actually kind of scary when you think about it. They do have control, like we talked about with the Invoker with the MP. But Gyrocopter, he's picked up from time to time. He's an okay choice here. Yeah, absolutely. And um, the thing about him is also he scouts very well in the late game. And even though you're a Lycan, you just can't run away as fast as uh, Gyrocopter can just dish out the deeps. Of course, you don't want to, like... Okay, so let me rephrase that. You have to keep, uh, make up your mind. Either you go and crush the Gyro, mm -hmm. and you're going to get stopped seconds, in the face by a Centaur, and Dazzle's going to grave him and all that. Or you just try to play around him, but his range is so ridiculously high on his flag cannon that you might as well not do it. And, oh, wow, that's a Beastmaster. 
Interesting last pickup coming out from Team Empire here. They they needed an off lane hero, or at the very least a solo safe lane, and they, they've gotten one in a Beastmaster that really, to be honest, nobody sees this hero all that much, at least in the off lane, mid from time to time, but certainly a surprise pickup, wouldn't you say, Pim? Yeah, that's that's definitely surprising to me, especially because, I mean, Mac is, is known for playing a variety of off lane heroes, and he can just excel so much on, on those playmakers, and well, you know what? Mac is actually on the Beastmaster really some sort of playmaker. Just get us get some boots up, maybe even a blink dagger, maybe just go for some sort of necro book. You've got so many options and you can just gank all around the place as soon as you roar up and the raw doesn't have that much of cooldown. 80 seconds on level one? Right. That's not huge at all. And it, it just destroys a gyro who's relying on his PKB to be very effective. Yeah, and that that's that's something to keep in mind, is that if if Beastmaster can be active around the map, if he can get into the action and try to take Jaro down, this this could be very good for Empire. But at the same time, the off lane is a difficult lane to be in for a Beastmaster nowadays. He's going to maybe try to sack Ancients, which will probably get warded if next KZ are you know in, interested in shutting down this Beastmaster at all. They might try to do their own thing. But as it stands, it is going to be game number one. We are going to jump into the game. We'll get in some introductions. I'll go ahead and do Empire real quick. For them, we have Mag, he'll be up in that top off lane on that Beastmaster. Mid, you'll have Resolution, he'll be on the Invoker, going for what seems to be the Quas Exhort build, because he did build that Null Talisman, doesn't need that base damage potentially. Now, on the bottom lane for Empire, you've got Vangscore, he's going to be on the Rubik, he's played it already this tournament, did a real nice job, always want to fly on the Lesh Rack, going out a little bit too far and to round it all out. Silent on the Lycan, dangerous player. Oh yeah, and also facing them on the trial lane, it's gonna be an equal on the Bane, supporting Mantis on the Gyrocopter, also joining them for now, it's gonna be at least Reese on the Dazzle, and of course Stellcat on the Centaur Warner, who's also somehow just chilling out here in the bottom lane, and I don't think we're gonna see some sort of quad lane, but they're gonna be contesting a lot, which means of course Waterfarker's gonna be in the mid lane, I think the bad rider. Yeah, and it looks like it's gonna be that dual lane again, we saw that in the last game with Rock's Kiss and next KZ, it's gonna be Stallcat again with Reeves here, Maybe have equal stay down. They have that solo safe lane Jowcopter who should be okay up against Mag. Axes will harass him, but he should be okay. The base damage is not that high. Flat cannon is really what's going to be doing the work there, and the rocket barrage if you can get close. But yeah, it looks like it's trialing versus trialing now. Like you called, Zerub Reward came through, so the pull camp is warded up right now for Empire. They can't pull through. They've got to try to counter it if they want to. Uh, Vangscore, he's got the two sentries on him, but I don't know. This is going to be dangerous. You have Centaur, you have... Uh, the Dazzle, and you have the Bane. This is a lot of damage coming out, but you do have to deal with the Howl as well. Yeah, also I'm not sure if they actually dewarded something already, because Reef's got one last hit. And I'm, I'm not they sure, did. but anyways... It was a ward right here, actually. I'm drawing Okay, yeah, this so. is... Actually, that's quite a bit, because, yeah, look at this. Deeps on Silent already, and there's gonna be a lift coming out onto Equal, but he lifts him in... Oh, well. Oh, that was well played there, of course, lifting in the Spit Earth. But still, that was a good trade. So far, just a bit of deeps onto Silence, and uh, if you just keep him low every time, he's too scared to just go forward. And hold on, level one is great, but you don't have your wolf, so yeah, not exactly. Too much right -click. Yeah, he can't get up in last hit right now. This is going to be the issue, and with no pull camp, he's not going to be able to do it under the safety of his own tower. So, for now, Empire in a position where they're playing very precarious. Dota and, and and honestly, next KZ they can go for a couple of kills. They can try to be aggressive here, and they can get away with it. Even if they die, it's still not that bad of a deal. As long as they just try to make sure that Empire know that they're kind of asserting their dominance on this lane. In the meantime, that rider sitting on seven last hits up against this Invoker who did go for that Quas Exhort, like we talked about. Top lane Mantis doing decently well up against Mag. Mag is getting some decent off lane farm as well, but Tatten he's taking that flat cannon now. The damage pushing him back a little bit. He's gonna have to regen. He's got six tango, so he's fine there. And as it stands, really, I mean, it looks like next KZ are winning this bottom lane. Silent might get something later, but as of right now, it's going to be difficult. Yeah, there was just one Rocket Barrage top lane onto Mag, and he's forced to just pop up it himself. Really he's got one more, and just as you mentioned, he's got lots and lots of regeneration, so he should be very fine. But the problem is, he doesn't have any sort of mana regeneration, so he can't really just spam out his Wild Axis to Harris down Mantis, who's, by the way, still got lots of regen yes. by himself. So, yeah, top lane should be looking good for next KZ. But I'm just waiting for some... Uh, well, major rotation, especially from Resolution. If he finds a nice rune, and there is a haste bottom lane, which is being guarded right now by Vansker, there could be lots and lots of action happening all around the map, actually. Yeah, and even Vansker can use that to try to gank mid. It's going to be tough with Cold Snap to try to bring down Batrider, who's pretty tanky, 700 health right now. and He looks like he's going to head over there. He's got only Telekinesis, no Fade Bolt. He's waiting. The lane is pushed in and might get pushed out. Wadafaka now going on Resolution. Maybe a bit of a bait here. Resolution ready to just try to like take some harass damage. There is going to be a quick pause. Vansker... Says there's a Skype issue. 
while we're waiting here, they did counter ward that, of course, uh, cr the the camp block that next KZ had put down. They put down the observer ward at the small camp just to make sure it's blocked, but it got counter warded real quick by one of these sentries. So well played there. Oh, Bankscore is looking for the courier. He's going to find it and get it. Dyer's courier is going to go down. That's Waterfucker's all. Actually, he was going to crow back out. So he luckily already had it on him, but now the only way he's going to get regen, well, other than tangos, is through getting rune control now. Yeah, and also the cold snap is going to be so huge for him now. And we can see already, like, what the fuck is so dropping at resolution? What the fuck goes for it? I'm not sure there's four stacks on him. Look at resolution dropping, but is this going to be enough? No, absolutely not. And it's going to be resolution picking up the first blood. And meanwhile, bottom lane, oh no, always want to fly, gets a storm into his face, reefs with a poison touch as well, and they just evaporate the Polish rag. Yep, so one for one across the map. Resolution getting started, having a good pickup there on Waterfaka. Using that cold snap like you talked about, but the bigger deal is down bottom, you saw how much damage they can do Denied. against one person out of position, let alone three. Obviously Silent not there to help out, nor was the Rubik, but you can see it right now. Next KZ, they're, they're of course taking this pull, they're contesting it, they're going to bring back the creeps at least into the lane. It's going to push out now. Vanscore trying to get as, uh, excuse me, Stallcat off the tower. At least you have Silent going to the jungle now. He has his wolves up. They're a bit squishy because they are level one. Still, though, it's something rather than nothing for the Lycan player. Yeah, and the levels are really telling the story here. So, though, they're kind of trying to keep it even, and the great thing about Vanscore's rotation is he just left the lane for just a tad, and he picked up the courier, so there was a lot of gold going in his pocket as well. So, that's a great thing to do, but still, Silent can't get this farm up. He's got 1k gold in a bank, 12 CS. That's all right ish. But this is nothing near the farm you want to see from Silent, and he's like he's your one-position carry player. He's known for his incredibly strong CS abilities and just being active all around the map. But if you've got a Lycan and like no items, you're gonna get you're gonna get just destroyed if you want to gank. Yeah, he can get that Vlad's quick, and that might help him out a bit more. I mean, he's getting close. He could buy a Morbid Mask now if he wanted to have that regen, that life steal going his way. He can get the Ring of Regen. He's got the Ring of Protection, so he can get a Basilius. So there's a couple of items he can go for. He will get that quick and just try to, I think, jungle or at least go into lane. Rotation from Reeves, mid. Resolution sees him there, realizing maybe he's going to be in trouble. He's back at the tower right now. Poison Touch would go. Rotation top from equal. Looking to find a pickoff on Mag, who's only sitting on 15 CS. I'm surprised Reeves. they broke this up. Oh. Yeah, Reeves just gets caught out here by Vanscar and they're going to lift him. But there is nothing more going on. They're just not confident in their ability to just bring this Dazzle down. And, well, the thing is with the Shallow Grave, yeah, you have to commit so much. And I... I'm not sure, but there is a huge creep wave going the way of, of Stalkat, so he's going to find a bit of experience as well as a lot of farm, and now he's got his strengths up, Ring of Protection now in his stash, and this is the point where he just is farming for his Blink Dagger, and then we're going to see lots of rotations, and I can't wait for this, because mid lane, well, Resolution doesn't have a Ghost Walk by up, uh, up by this time. Yeah, that's the thing. He is right now sitting on Quas Exor here. No Quas Wex coming up from Resolution. Still, though, this is, like you talked about, it's really all about the Blink Daggers. Whether it's Wadafaka, whether it's Stallcat, I mean, it, it's going to be the item. Down bottom, nice Split Earth going through, but do they have the follow-up? No, there's no Lycan. They didn't use Hells. Maybe they did. I'm not sure. Silent didn't pop it, it looks like, in that top lane where he rotated to. He's going to try to help out Mag, or at least just leech some experience or some CS right now. Basilius, Ring of Regen, done Boots of Speed as well. And uh, for now... Empire, they seem to be a bit behind, and this is a position they've not really caught themselves in this entire tournament. They have not been behind at all. They still have a slight gold advantage, and now it's actually even. Experience-wise, it's about 500, but in terms of the lane advantage, it seems like the next KZ are almost winning every lane, at least getting very close to contesting to win every lane. Yeah, that's just great news, especially what the fuck, I guess he just was the first blood, but he's got 1.3k gold in the bank, and well... There goes your Centaur. This is exactly what they need to make happen. This Centaur was getting out of hand. He was level 5. If he gets a quick level 6, that was just way too much global presence on him, and good rotations. Yeah, the Sunstrike came through. It was actually just the two heroes combining up, plus the Sunstrike. Barely on point, but it did connect. Now, with that kill, or at least with the assist, Midas is going to be done for the Invoker now. He's going to head to the jungle. He's going to use it and try to get a little bit more farm from it. And that's going to help him out. No Midas is just yet, I believe, for next KZ. You have Mantis in the top lane with 1,000 gold, a Ring of Basilius, and Phase. No surprise there. Waterfucker might get caught out. Gonna just walk away, essentially. Not even needing to use the Firefly. Down bottom, two heroes rotating. Reeves as well as Stallcat might try to fight on Always Wanna Fly, but he'll back off now. Lycan still resorting to the jungle here. And even yeah. though they get a kill or two, I mean, they need to get back into this somehow. And I don't know what's going to do it for them. 
Yeah, but the thing with the Lycan is, if he gets a Vlad's up, he's gonna farm like so well. Yeah. So I can certainly see this working out, and especially the mana regeneration. It's gonna be enabling him to just pop your wolves each and every time they're gonna be available. Um, but still, now bottom lane. Bit of wolf scanning going on here, Stalkhead. And there's a Reese waiting in the wing, so maybe they're just gonna turn this around. But it's a 2 for 3, and here they go. It's a nice lift off into a stun. Well played. There's a shallow grave. Nice body blocking from the wolf so far. Oh, and they need a few more right clicks, and they're gonna take it. The fate ball is gonna be enough. And another death on the centaur. He's no what? 1 for 2? Mm. Yeah. They shut him down. Now mid, like, action happening. Cold Sam's gonna fly through. Sunstrike and the axe is combining to get the kill. Mag participating in that engagement. Equal roaming through. Looking for a nightmare or a brain sap to get the kill. Cannot find the return kill. What happened in that bottom lane? Nice hold of the fade bolt there from Bangscore just to make sure that they had that killing potential once Grave went away. And just real, real smooth play coming through. Equal looking for that haste rune. He's gonna find it. Mag can't get there, sadly. And they're looking for this tower now, and all of a sudden, even though Lycan didn't have a good start, they put a lot of damage on that tower. Yeah, now they go in just huge rotations, but they have to make stuff happen. Otherwise, it's kind of waste, and well, Sinai can just always go rotate to the jungle if there's no one else. But man, this this Bane was just so fast. He's got Ace Rune, and he's still not going to be finding anyone, though. So, kind of wasted rotations, but oh no, Silent. He has to be very careful. Does he have his ultimate? No, he doesn't. Still, though. Yeah, I guess I guess Vanskos is way too scary. You don't want to gain against this guy because he, so far, like Vanskos is doing some amazing work. Yeah, absolutely. And he didn't have Lasso there. It looked like I, actually he might have used it on Seven, but he's actually a full health, so probably not. Um, I didn't see what was going on over there, but at the same time they take that tower. It is going to go down. Lycan gets it. I think that was with the wolves. Nice micro coming through from Silent just to pick up a tower. I mean, they could have maybe tried to deny it there, but the wolves get the last hit. Excellent micro coming through. His Vlad's now done. Nine minutes in. Still, though, you look at Mantis' CS. That's that's a lot, man. That's pretty good. Yeah, that's absolutely. And he was kind of left alone in the top lane. Now, he's just going away to pull and, and get some CS from the neutral. Just a miracle at play so far from Mantis. He's just going to go ahead and pick up a Helm of the Dominator. I'm reasonably sure they're going to just stack the engine with it and, and not try to fight at all and just go stall the game for a bit. They, they're facing a Beastmaster as well as the Lycan, so they've got well, they've got quite something to bring him down if they ever get close, so mm. you have to be very careful, but look at Mac, he smoked up, he wants to find a kill. Motafaka though, he's here, he's ready to help out, he's got that lasso, Mag now backing off with the help of Always Wanna Fly, and there is this Observer Ward here on the ground for the Dire Team, so they see this walking around, they see this kind of gang train coming through. Top lane bank scores here as well, there's no ward on the river for the Dire Team, Caldon's gonna fly, that's gonna hit up on Resolution, only doing a bit of damage, he doesn't seem to mind, looks like a tickle to him. Back off, maybe just continue to farm. So that was interesting. I mean, it's only it's a pretty short cooldown, so I guess no harm, no foul. Might have wanted to use CS a bit. Now they're roaming through. Mag still wants to go, but they can't find an opening. Radiance and everybody else on the map continues attack. to farm. Yeah, and this is just costing them so much time. Mag is level 8, so he's looking very well on the on the level side of things. But still, you just don't want to run around and, and do nothing. And now they TP bottom. It's a double TP rotation. Oh no, they find Stalkat, but they don't have the vision as of yet. At least they don't... Uh, they do have the vision, but they don't have the range. Oh no, and there's going to be a Centaur uh, Stampede <laughs> coming through. And well, they are looking rather good. Also, Bane finding Dyer's lots of levels in the mid lane. Yeah, there, this is what you see so often, is once you hit your level 6, or at least a, a period where you feel comfortable, which is what Resolution and Modifaka have done. They're going to roam out of the lane, make sure that some of these supports get that level 6 up, get the experience leash to make sure they can start fighting and being more effective. And more and more often we see this, especially with heroes, like I said, that only require a couple of levels to be effective. So now, if you look at that tower top, it did take some damage. Mantis is back to CSing. They almost got that kill bottom for Empire. Not able to get it done, though. The Roar not in range, obviously. The Stampede helping out in that regard. Stallcat now backing away. He's actually about 1,000, a bit less than that away from his Blink Dagger now, so pretty good. Pretty good stuff. Yeah, also quite some nice items coming out here. Always on the fly, so the Lushrak has got some arcane boots up and it's going to be helping out his team a lot. Mm -hmm. And there is going to be an urn inbound as well for him, so there's going to be a few items coming out. Resolution's got his Midas up as well, which is obviously expected, but still, nice timing. And now Mantis, wow, look at the deeps here, Defeating Blast, one more right click. And they're going to pick up the very important kill, you and now bottom lane is going to be Silent Force to pop his ultimate. So far he's running away nicely, and he's getting away. Nice. Okay, so Silent is good to go, just farming away. But he doesn't have a mana for some uh, wolf Dyer's summon right now. Hmm. Oh, there attack. they are. Hello. Yeah, they just came by, and just to say hi, essentially, to, of course, Waterfucker. Using his lasso there, that's on cooldown for about a minute or so. 
Um, nice play to try to pick up the kill, but it's going to be tough to bring that Lycan down. We talked about trying to bring down the Gyrocopter, and they only really committed to resolution, and I believe one other hero to get that kill. So not that much. I mean, yes, they spent a lot of time roaming up here earlier, but now they grab the tower, they grab the kill up on uh, Mantis, and now the Necro Book level 1 is in fact done for the Invoker. We've seen how much work a Necro 3 can do. Now TP's coming mid, Poison Touch on Silent, Fiend's Grip as well, he's got no help coming through, they need to war, they're gonna cancel, Bane backing away now, he doesn't want to go any further, they couldn't pick up the kill there, they tried their best, Silent has no mana, but he's still fine nonetheless, he's gonna get Shadow Waved, Arcane's gonna get him up to full as well, or at least to a bit of mana here, actually can actually do something with his Wolves, can Howl, which is what they're gonna do, Lightning Storm taking down his Creep Wave, looking for the tier 1 tower, Resolution doing work, Necro... Minions popped up, call down's gonna fly, they're backing off now, but the Necro and the Wolves will take it down, Reeves now getting caught out, everyone kinda low for Empire, but they're ready to fight again, Shallow Grave up on Reeves, getting low, the Lightning Storm did go, will they keep fighting? Roar, Mantis caught out, Lycan gets the kill on Reeves, that's two, Split Earth going through, always wanna fly, pick up the second one, they're gonna try to go for a tier two, Cold Snap on Waterfucker, they're getting run down, next KZ, losing three, all of a sudden, Empire again, just Dyer's keeping their foot on the gas pedal right now and gonna take a tier two. Yeah, they're looking so good. Also, one thing to Dyer's note, Resolution's got picked. Um, yeah, so, so he actually leveled up one point in the wax, which is something you usually don't see because you just go exot all the way, mm -hmm. like 4-0-4, four, 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 and then you've got double four put up. But he actually elected to go one level in the wax, and now he's got a Defining Blast, and this enabled him to not only take a kill on the Gyrocopter in the top lane, which we saw a few minutes earlier, it was also the reason why they actually got the kill on the Bat Trader. And these are high-profile kills. They've got high levels. They yield so much experience to your own team. And this is why the supports are looking so well. I mean, Vance Cross level 7, he's got the he's got the Bane Ultimate stolen as well, so whenever there's going to be another team fight, they've got so much locked down. Yeah, they do, and I love that. And I, I was talking about that in the draft. The Fiend's Grip is so nice to have. I'm glad he picked it up. You talked about that Wex, that's absolutely huge. I love the fact that he went for Deafening Blast. Have more spells in your toolkit ready to go. Necro level 2 is going. Everyone posturing around Roche. Wadafaka jumping right into the pit already. You can see they're not going to find anybody. Backing off is going to be Empire. Down bottom, Silent continues to farm. He's got a Midas himself. I'm not sure when he picked that up, but he does have it now. 2,400 gold in the bank. And now they're certainly in the lead. There's only one kill somehow going for next KZ, and I don't know. I mean, they're down 10k already, man, at 14 minutes in. Yeah, this is huge. And this is so hard to come back from. Last game around, it was... It was like this back and forth game, but if you're just trailing so much against this uh, very strong mid game oriented lineup from Empire, I mean, you got a beast master. He's going to have so much lockdown against your soul, really carry right. the gyrocopter. So, what, what can you actually do? You kind of have to rely on split push, and you can't do this with those heroes. Yeah, I mean, they're right now grouping up. They can't really split push as it is. They're trying to get a BKB on Mantis, like you mentioned. It's not going to matter with Beastmaster, with Roar, with whatever you have. So, with next KZ, they, they picked a lineup that maybe isn't going to succeed here. They've got to try, though. The game's still going through. They're not out of it yet, but this first game not going well already. We've got to come through. This might be the fight. Fiend's Grip already, though. Used on Stallcat. Maybe in trouble. Shallow Grave keeping him alive. Resolution falling low. He's the first to go down. Roar is up on Mantis. Taking a bit of damage. They already used the Grave. Mantis in trouble. No Fable to come through. Always want to fly. He's got to back off. He hits the Split Earth. The Axe is flying. Reeves is still alive. Everybody's so low on next game. KZ, the smoke going, Reeves still alive, and they can't catch him out because they've got no way to chase after him. Somehow, next KZ win the engagement. They only lose two, or they only lose one, excuse me, and Empire loses two in a weird kind of way, I'd say. Yeah, that was pretty good, I have to say. Also, the, the big thing here to note was Selkit just, just like destroyed people left and right because he just jumped in, popped his rampage, and he stunned them all up. And then everything was used to him pretty much everything they had and in the end well you're gonna take down Selcat but he's a central war runner after his uh, after Stimpede is over right that's it yeah he's he's pretty much done he's, he's used all of his abilities I mean you could wait till they're off cooldown again but at that point if you focus him down you're gonna take return damage obviously you've got to deal with him in one way or shape or another otherwise he's just gonna maybe run a havoc I mean they didn't like the fact that he was in the middle of the team fight obviously but I I definitely agree they needed to go on somebody else and they maybe needed to save the fiends grip otherwise I'm, I'm not sure either way it's not a horrible fight for Empire but it's something that they could have definitely won and it looks like this is going to be a deny ready for silent here on this tier 1 tower top he's also getting a lot of farm his necro book level one's done I don't think he's got anything else in the courier yet no he does not 700 gold in the bank uh, item wise, Empire are definitely Radiance looking real good. I mean, there's almost a mech done for Mag now. Um, point boosters up for always want to fly if he wants to go for a Bloodstone. 
uh, resolution is getting his necro three. So two necros are going to be done in short order. And on top of the fact that next KZ don't really have a way to counter push this other than flat cannon, firefly to a certain extent, they have to deal with necros now. Mm, this is so hard, especially because the gyro is still looking for his BKB. He's going to have it rather quick. I mean, he has some 900 gold, he needs 1.6k for the Mithril Hammer. And this is, it's coming, but it's not coming at a fast pace. So, especially after speed KB is actually over, and he's going to be using it so much in the fights that you are going to see, oh, that was, what happened? He tied to an uh, ancient stack. Oh, Jesus Christ, yeah. man, what should do it? Anyways, that was a point. Okay, yeah, exactly, like, the BKB is going to have such little duration, mm -hmm. like, in 20 minutes. It's still going to be really, really, really hard, and... Usually you, you want to see some necro books are very early, and they are early. Against the BKB, it's not going to be the biggest issue, but you have to time it so well that you're actually going to go ahead, flat hand the creeps down, and so far he doesn't have too much damage, and those things, man, they pick a punch. Oh yeah, they definitely do. Now, Blink Lasso up on Max score. he is in some trouble, getting caught out, look at the damage wow. of the Rocket Barrage, the Shadow Wave, all that work done on that poor Rupert, gets caught out of fortified. position. While that's all happening though, it sounds like, listen, I'm just going to try to take this tier 2 tower top, or at least force a TP, and he does. That's equal coming through, so that's unfortunate. He's got a TP up there, but they do get the kill on the Rubik. All the while, resolution. Look at the split push, top, Dying bottom, wherever they're gonna find pushes, no matter what. Nice and I coming through from the last track. Reeves alive, but just barely the shell grave again, keeping him up and fighting. But he is gonna fall here. Mag's gonna take the kill with the right click now. Oh, coming through from Silent, looking at Mantis and just hitting him down, bashing him, killing him, just absolutely owning him. And Jaro is gonna go down as well because of it. Three dead for next KZ. TP coming through from Watafaka. They are not going to be able to cancel it, it looks like, in time. They'll make it out, but two two towers fall. They get some kills. And boom, Empire going to go Roche, it seems. Yeah, and Roche is huge. If you've got a Lycan with a Roche, you don't even need to give it to, to the Lycan. You kind of just use it on Resolution. And also Resolution just picked up a solo kill onto the invisible Stalkat who was standing right next to him. There was some sort of lucky coincidence because he just popped his Necro book and then just destroyed him. Oh, goodness. Like Cold Snap defeating Vaz and then just... Well, the centaur was dead. Yeah. And this just was so hard to see. I mean, like... And there was a team fight they lost as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that too. I mean, but, like, that's kind of funny for the invokers. Like, oh, look what I found. A free kill. And cold snap. Yep, you're dead. Okay, good. So, like, the Necro 3 coming into play. Speaking of that, mm, Silent has his. So, the BKB gets finished at the same time at 19 minutes in. And, and by all means, that's not a super bad BKB timing. But in this game, it kind of is because of how far behind they are and what they have to deal with. And you've, you've already touched on a number of topics so it seems at this point they're probably down more than 10k yeah you look at the gold deficit it's 12k empire leading by that much of a margin and almost 10k experience lead going out for empire as well this last two t tier two tower is going to be taken rather soon uh, the ages is up on silence so they can afford to be aggressive now while well, that's happening oh reeves i don't know they, they're losing map control as well yeah there's some nice defensive warning coming out here from reeves and this is a very nicely placed ward it it sees so much but still, like, if you just see a Lycan running at you, what can you do? Even if you see him, he's going to crush you in the face. And so far, Mantis is trying to defend his own tower. He's got his BKB up, so he's kind of tanking it up for his team. But 1.1k HP, he doesn't have the most armor. He's got 17 armor. This is great. But this is nothing like a like a tanky, very, very tanky. And oh, there you go. There, they're going to be picking up Mac here. And this could be huge if they just bring him down without an Orius. And can they bring him down? No, he's dropping. He can't draw. He can't just move. And still, though, Mantis BKB is activated. Mantis now laying down the right clicks as well. There's a lot of damage from his flank cannon and the Baraka Verge, but it's going to be Silent just cleaning house, setting up, just destroying everyone. The Hound is loose, and he's going to be picking up more. He always want to fly. Oh, no, you have to get away. And in the end, it's going to be Waterfucker just running away and picking up the kill. Three for three trade when it's all said and done. A buyback coming through equal. Oh, no, he's low. The Wolves. Oh, the Brain Sap keeping him afloat and alive. Oh, that backlash damage equal, almost witnessing death once again. That was scary. But, like I said, when it's all said and done, three for three, like he talked about, the roar is so important, couldn't get it off. He got focused down so quickly, could not do anything there. Doesn't really matter, though. I mean, there's still... Oh, yeah, I didn't even see Waterfucker sneak up there and grab that kill on poor Vangscore. Oh, boy. Yeah, he didn't even use his, uh, his ultimate there. So it's still going to be in cooldown for another 10 seconds. He's going to have it up for the next fight. Or if you just find someone once again. But if you find anyone, it's it will be silent in the top, the top um, well, jungle there. And you can't bring him down. He's got an Aegis. He's got freaking BOTs in his stash as well. Another 500 gold on top of that. So, yeah, he's looking rather good. Yeah. But here's a hypothetical. Because if you look at Mantis's inventory, he's sitting on a Demon Edge. Now, I don't think he'd be going for a Rapier at this point. But we can always hope, man. And it, Like, at what point do you say it's time to go for that item? Hmm. 
Yeah, it's hard. I mean, they've got all the options. Oh, wow, Silent just taking a crap ton of damage here. And Equal's gonna have his Fiend Scripts, gonna use it onto Silent. They're gonna bring him down. They're gonna have a double edge in two seconds. Do they even need it? Hell no. But can they bring him down twice because he just popped his ultimate? Oh yes. no, he's gonna be respawning without it. This yeah. is gonna be huge. Now Silent running away. No, can he get it? No, 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 no. Absolutely not. Big fight. Oh, 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 resolution. Got him. My goodness. Nice snap, my friend. With a 360 nose go right in his face. Yeah. Uh, that was well played by resolution. Mm -hmm. And this is the power of the Exit Invoker. Yeah, that's that's and you you have to hit like one or two of those a game, you know? Like that's in your job resume, I think, for an invoker who's going quas exhort. Like you can combine up to get a couple with like maybe shackles or whatever stun they have, but like it's so nice to like hit one of those snipes. Dyer's middle tower is under yeah. attack. It's it's also like very demoralizing. You are thinking like, nice, we just killed the Lycan twice. Great job, guys. Let's get out, regroup. We're gonna, we're gonna still be in this game, and then that comes to Sunshine. You're like, come on, man. Yeah, like seriously. It's just, yeah, it's just so hard. And I always want to fly in Empire Resolution. No, I mean Empire just ganking up bottom lane, stealing the Ancients. Oh man, that's just adding insult to injury. And there's a freaking Bloodstone up. And I always want to fly. How did he find the money? I he had that point booster a while ago, and I guess he was just in fights and got a lot of assists. I don't know. He must have farmed somewhere, but. We apparently weren't watching as Leshrac picks that up now. That's 22 minutes in, 23 minutes in for a Bloodstone on a support Lesh. Cold Snap's going to fly through across the river. Wadafaka getting caught way out of position. Not sure what he was doing there, but Resolution grabs a kill. That's actually a dominating streak that'll pick up 500 gold for. The Tier 3 tower, actually pretty low in this mid lane. And what's interesting is there is a lot of defensive ward placement coming out. You talked about this already for next KZ, but it's, it's not helping them right now. They're losing heroes still, and a lot of that is because they're being maybe too aggressive here. Next KZ, they're trying to get back into it, obviously. They're getting a couple kills here and there, but now they have to defend their base without a bat rider for 18 seconds. It doesn't have a this. Mm. Yeah, oh, nice. No, he didn't hit anyone with a stun, and now Stalker in a world of hurt. A lot of deeps going his way, but can he deny himself with a Bane? No, he absolutely can't. Gets healed, though, and they still go ham. Mantis now popping up his ultimate, but still Silent is just eating them all alive. Always want to fly in the back lines. Still alive, somehow, some way. The Bloodstone Charge is keeping him up there, and... Oh, man, what a disastrous fight. They lose, too. Everyone is just so low. This could have been such a nice turnaround. Yeah, and Mantis actually hit the neck with creep as well. He's got to go back, or at least... Oh, the Sunstrike. No, he was dodging it. He was making sure that didn't hit up, but... Now, I mean, yeah, big fight going through Empire, taking two right now, and they're going to look for a set of racks, and it is going to be the MK MKB coming out for the Gyrocopter, so no Rapier, even though that would be absolutely fantastic. Mantis is going to try to fight now. He's got a bit of extra damage. He can work, always want to fly down, potentially, but they cannot chase, it seems. Telekinesis Reeves caught out. Nice. Axe is coming through for Mag as well to get the kill. Split Earth misses. The melee racks about to fall. That's going to be it for the first set of racks of the game. Now getting caught out. Nice stomp. Nice double edge. Silent. Low. So is Mag. They'll both fall. They're turning it around. Always want to fly. Getting caught out as well. Split Earth onto Mantis, but the only one. He'll use his Bloodstone Charge just to make sure he survives. Well, at least goes down and make sure he doesn't lose anything from it. But now, Resolution getting chased down. Poison Touch. There's the Tornado. Out of mana is the Invoker. Stampede is up. Stomp's going to go. Resolution, say goodnight, my friend. They throw up the uh, Sentry War just in case. But three big core heroes down for Empire right now. And... And this actually does give room, at least for next KZ, to maybe get a tower or at least something out of this. Man, and I, I was like, if they wouldn't have taken Rex, and but this, this would have been such a 3 2 2. Anyways, now they're still looking good. 25 more seconds on the Lycan, and then they can actually defend their base. There's, this is like no problem. And what is also very nice, always want to fly, just as you mentioned, he denied himself with a Bloodstone. But still, like, he's up Radiance right now. He's got yeah. so many charges on the, on the thing that he's just Radiance up and running once again. Can just attack. defend, and even the glyph is being Dyer's popped here. And this tier 2 is going to be falling, but nothing else, most likely. And that actually always want to fly. He was only down for like 5 seconds or something. Something ridiculous. Yep. I mean, it seems very short anyways, because of course he is kind of low in level, and that's an early bloodstone, so the duration of which your respawn time is, is not very high. So. With that now, I mean, he's got seven charges left. Invoker's going to be up in 12 seconds. He's a big part of their team, so they can't really afford to lose him that often. Lycan's back up. He's got bots. He's going to be going for a BKB, it looks like, as he has the Ogre Club now. In terms of the items on the side of next KZ, they don't have much to really write home about. I mean, they don't even have a mech yet on Centaur, who does have a Blink Dagger, yes, but the items are all pretty much centralized in two locations. Wadafucker with the Force and the Blink, and Mantis with all these other items there, so... Now there is that mech done for Centaur, they're getting at least something, but something in comparison to a whole lot of everything for Empires is not that much.
Yeah, what I would like to see is just Emperor waiting for Silence BKB, waiting for the Hex up onto the Invoker, and then they can just maul down mid lane. I mean, they've got mid lane already taken, but they might as well just go mid, because there is no tower, and then just win the fight and rotate to the bottom tower. Yeah. This could be something, but they could also just go Rose or whatever. And speaking of Rose, he's going to be respawning in, let's see where the timer is, one minute. Yes, one minute exactly as it comes up there. Not too long, nine minute Roche timer coming out for, well, either Empire or next KZ, whoever can grab it. So. Now you talked about going down mid, and I think they're going to play the more, I guess, defensive style. Go for that Roshan. They could definitely be aggressive. I mean, Empire, known for that kind of grist nature that they are. They have the mech, they have the blink, they have the roar, they've got everything on mag. They've got the scythe now for resolution, so he's got hex, he's got a lot of disables as well. Like in split pushing top, he's got necro 3. They're probably going to have to defend that tier 2 tower unless they just want to let it go for free, which I would be very surprised to see them do. But they might go for Roche instead. They say, listen, this is going to be more important as an objective than that tier 2 tower top. And even Lycan's not going to stay around to try to go for it. Yeah, and this is pretty much the only chance next because he's going to have in the next few minutes. Because if they force a team fight without BKB up on the Lycan, this could be it. The problem is, though, they obviously have no idea if there is going to be a BKB right in the courier sitting next to him. So if you just overcommit a bit, this is game. One more Aegis up on any one of Empire, be it, well, be it Resolution or be it even Silent, it's just going to mean game. But, well, they held on once, and they can hold twice, I'm pretty sure. Although, I'm not sure if defending the tier 2, it's only got 400 HP, it's going to be the right call. And um, there is so far only creeps, as well as a few wolves, just hitting on it. And, yeah, so, so you can defend this, obviously, but if this is going to be a full, full on 5 versus 5, oh, nice denial. Yeah, they just wanted to make sure they got that. They didn't even take the creep wave off, surprisingly enough. They knew the wolves were there, so it might have been too much of an effect to take it off. But, yeah, they do deny it. Um, there was no fortification. That's a nice little play coming out. But you're right, one more Aegis, and that's probably not only going to be a tier 3, but a set of racks as well. And they can't afford to bleed another rack, so we'll see. Empire leading the way. They smoked up. They're going to look for a wraparound here. Reeves might get caught out. There's the shapeshift going through. Mantis getting blown up now. Reeves getting chased down. So is equal. The meatball up on the high ground. By that coming through from the gyro. They also took down Wadafaka on that bat rider. Now they're going to go for a tier 3 tower. Creep wave's not quite there. It's actually pushed all the way out, so they've got to wait. I mean, they can go in because, of course, they have the creep wave coming through the mid lane soon. They've got to be careful. Sunstrike flying, missing on pretty much every target. They thought Mantis was going to back off, taking a lot of that damage. But now they're going to regroup, and they're going to go mid like you talked about. Except this time they might just try to... No, maybe not. They're going to go Roche oh, instead. Rush. Yeah, okay. that's a smarter play. Yeah. Just play it safe. You just pick up the very annoying Bat Rider. He's not going to be in here for an Aegis heal at all. Because every lane is just pushed in. And those those Rex taken down mid lane earlier just helping out so much right now. And even though they had the Radiant, they're going to take down a very easy Roche. And man, like Silent hurt so much with the Alacrity on him. And it's ridiculous. And he's got a freaking Midas. He's got so much stuff. He's got a GPM which is just through the roof. 619 right now. Man, yeah. this guy's farming. Yeah, he's, he's very farmed. And he was actually behind uh, the Gyrocopter not too long ago, but now with that BKB up for Silent, with the Vlad's bots, with the Midas, with the Necronomicon, his next item going to come soon, whatever that is, might be a Basher. We still don't know. I mean, he's he's very farming. He's not going to stop anytime soon. So they've taken one objective in the mid-racks. They've taken another in the Aegis and the Roshan. Now their focus is going to be on the last set of, uh, well, the last two sets of racks, I should say. And it shouldn't be too hard. I mean, they have such an item advantage. They have such a golden experience advantage. It's certainly not over. And one good fight from an XKZ can maybe rebound things a bit. But they need four or five good fights to actually get back in the game. Without a set of racks, without the items that they really need, this is going to be difficult at best. And almost impossible yeah. at the worst. Absolutely. And, well, there's now a few stacks being farmed up here. That's nice-ish. And just choking out your opponent would be nice if they would have been ahead. But they are absolutely not. And, yeah. well, stealth has got an Invis Rune, which is nice. But it's it's always these these small things which don't matter too much if you're just so far behind. And checking the gold graph, uh, man, 15k, man. This is so much. Even 12k experience. And Silent's just doing a great job. Oh, no, he runs into the stun here. And I'm not sure. Do they have more? Do they have an ultimate coming up from Equal? They're popping the ultimate. Now they're just running. They're just running all so fast. And in the end... Oh no, he gets getting body blocked. Oh, uh, almost there. Oh, still cat gonna fall. Nice turnaround. Nice, nice split earth coming in. And there's the roar. Equal getting caught out. Buybacks a plenty. Manus's BKB charges popped. Still taking the right click damage. He's got his rocket barrage up again. Split earth just a bit missed time. Deafening blast. Doing so much work. He is down. He's got no buyback. Cold snap's gonna fly an equal. The necro warrior is doing work. Mech's gonna be up. Nice shallow grave. They're focusing on the tier three sort of, but they're also diving past the racks. Equal is gonna fall. He's down. He has no buyback. GG's called. Game number one taken handedly by Team Empire. 
I mean, it's really there. Is there any surprise? Is there any surprise? Wow. I've... Yeah, you know what? Yeah, actually, yes. They just were looking so incredibly strong. Uh, when the Lycan didn't have too much farm early on, I was like, oh, maybe like maybe next Kazee can just run away with the game? Yeah. Uh, actually, actually, no. No, <laughs> they can't. <laughs> oh, man. They just played so well. I'm not sure if you feel the same way, but I think a lot of that issue was they could have been aggressive with another kind of pick instead of a gyrocopter. Think of somebody more kind of like semi-carry or I guess early game oriented uh, rather than the gyrocopter. Not that he's bad at it, but they could have shut down the Lycan even harder. That's just my opinion. I'm not sure what you think. Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure. I, I think the problem was um, that the early rotations didn't pay off too much. The Centaur didn't have a very quick Blink Dagger. He, he had a nice-ish timing on the Blink Dagger, but everyone was already snowballing on Empire, and they just made amazing stuff happen. And even though Mac kind of lost his lane, he still just made up for it in the, in the whole freaking game. He was always there. He's got, he's got two or three for seven, and he's a Beastmaster just running at you, just roaring you up, getting at your face. And, well, so far, everyone just played marvelous, especially Vanscar. Like, his early rotations with the Courier just mid lane and then just making stuff happen all around the map this guy yeah he's just playing so well they're just so good empire on another level right now we are going to take a quick break guys we're going to jump into game number two in just a second once again my name is mont i'm joined by pimp knuckle we're going to take a quick break guys stick around make sure you guys follow us twitter.com slash mont 32 for me twitter.com slash pimp knuckle for pimp so we'll take a bit break we'll get right into it with the next game starting up soon stick around everybody